All right, so up to this point, we have looked at a lot of different ways to find either a missing side length or a missing angle measure for a right triangle. We started with the Pythagorean theorem. We looked at some special triangles, the 45, 45, 90, the 30, 60, 90 triangle, where we only needed to know one side in order to determine the other two missing links. And then we looked at our trig ratios, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent to look at the different relationships between opposite side, adjacent side, and hypotenuse. And we could use those ratios to either find a missing side length or a missing angle. We're now going to look at a non-right triangle. So when we have a triangle which is no longer a right triangle, you do not see a right angle in this triangle. It's a non-right triangle. We can apply what's called the law of sines to find a missing side length or a missing angle measure. And what we know, what we know about non-right triangles is there's a proportional relationship between the sine of the angle and its side. And that proportion is equal to the angle and its side length. So the sine of angle A, the sine measure of angle A here, is proportional to its opposite side length in the same manner that the sine of B is proportional to its side length is in the same manner that C is to um, its side C. So sine of A over B is equal to the sine of B over B is equal to the sine of C over C. Now you're going to be given two out of those three ratios. And you got to have two, but you can then solve for a missing side or a missing angle measurement. Okay, it says to solve for a missing value, we'll use two of the three ratios to set up a proportion. So you'll notice that in this triangle you're given one angle measure, and just like we've always done with triangles, we want to look at the side that is opposite of this. So we're going to call this angle A. That means the side opposite of the angle is side A. So we've set up the sine of 71 degrees over its side length in one of my ratios. That proportion is going to be the same as here's angle, we'll just call this angle B, well, the side that's across from that angle goes with it. So we'd say the sine of 42 degrees over its side length. So when you set this up, you should only have one variable in your proportion. Okay, when we talk about the sine of 42 degrees, we're back to using our table, just like we've been using it. I can look up the decimal for the sine of 42 degrees, and I get this value of 0 0.6691 over its side length, 27 is equal to, I can look up the sine of 71 degrees, look up 71 and I go over to its sine. Okay, check out on your table and make sure that you are locating those decimals. You're getting those numbers off the table. Okay, once you have those, you're going to do cross products to solve. So when I take this product, I'm going to get 0 0.6691 times A equals, and then I need to get this product right here. So 0.94, let me go grab a calculator. Okay, I want to take that decimal, 0.9455, and I want to take that times 27 equals, and I get this decimal of, so I've got 0.6691A equals 25, point five two eight five now I'm not I'm going to leave that number on my calculator don't erase it just leave it there what's the next step in solving that equation okay the next step we're trying to get a by itself so we're going to divide by that decimal so I'm going to take I'm going to leave that on my calculator I'm not going to round it I'm just going to hit divided by point six six nine one. That answer is the one I'm going to round. Now, what are we missing here? What are we solving for? We're solving for a side length. That is a side length. So again, we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So I have 38.15. Does that 5 make the 1 stay or go up? All right, that's going to go up. So we're going to answer that as 38.2 units. Okay, we don't know if it's centimeters. Oh, we do know it's centimeters. So that's 38.2 centimeters. Okay, that's what it is when you find a side length. Now, we're also, we can use the law of sines to find 
an angle measure. Okay, here's what it looks like to find an angle measure. Here's the angle that I'm given, 75. So I'm going to say the sine of 75 degrees, and I always put it in a ratio with the side length that is across from it. So sine of 75 over 24. Okay, here's the angle measure that I want to know. Okay, I always pair it up with what's across from it. So I'm looking for the sine of x over 21. That's the proportion I want to set up. Okay, I can go to my table and I can find the decimal for the sine of 75. So I'm going to look that up and I get 0.9659, which is what they have here. Okay, and I'm going to do the cross products. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to have, I'm going to take 0.9659. times 21, it equals, and I'm going to end up with this 20.2839 equals, when I go this way, I'm going to have 24 times the sine of x. Okay, now you're trying to undo multiplication. We're trying to solve for x. So I'm going to divide by 24. So again, don't round that number on your calculator yet. You're going to divide by 24 and hit equals. Okay, you get a decimal that is 0.8451625. Again, no need to round it yet. Okay, that's equal to the sine of x. Now, if you think back to the last section that we did, anytime we're trying to find an angle measure, that's when we want to use that inverse key. So because it's sine, we're going to use the inverse sine. So have that decimal on your calculator. Just hit shift, sine, and I've got 57.6. Okay, so I'm going to round that to the nearest degree. I'm going to say, I'm going to round to the nearest degree and say x equals 58 degrees. Okay? So you're either going to be solving to find a side length or you're going to be solving to find an angle measure. And that's how you use the law of signs.